Listening to God's Word is an essential tool for your spiritual growth. We bring to you the simple but highly anointed message that guarantees absolute liberation from all oppressions of the devil and powerful impartation for all round lifting in life. Take a leap into a divine encounter as the anointed man of God takes you into an adventure of a lifetime. God bless you as you listen. Today is a family covenant family day and also our end of the month of March 2019 Thanksgiving service. And I pray that today shall be a day to be long remembered in your life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The prophetic focus has brought to us a while ago is I am redeemed for the top. I don't know about you. Say it louder if you are sure of it. I am redeemed for the top. Our teaching series in all our Sunday services is captioned Understanding the Laws of Success. Understanding the laws of success. What is understanding? Simply put, knowing what is under something that is making it to stand. Praise God. Understanding simply means knowing what is under something that is making it to stand. So when you see something standing, then find out what exactly is making it to stand. When you see something standing, find out what is under it. What is the secret or what are the secrets that is making this thing to stand? Instead of criticizing it and jumping into conclusion, it's luck. Don't tell me it's luck. You have luck. Don't tell me it's God's help. You have access to God's help. Don't tell me it's God's favor. You have access to God's favor. Don't tell me it's God's grace. We as believers have equal access to the grace of God. Have you not heard? Have you not read? Titus chapter 2 and verse 11. It says, the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared to how many? How many? How many? I can't hear you say it louder. Does that include you? For the grace of God that bringeth salvation as appeared to all men. And by that grace we are saved. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8. By grace ye are saved. So everyone that is redeemed of God have access to the grace of God that qualifies for success. But the question is, why are we not operating at the same frequency? Why are we not having the same result? You know why? Among other things, grace multiplies true knowledge. Second Peter chapter 1 and verse 2. It says, grace and peace be multiplied. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through knowledge. The knowledge of God. Grace and peace be multiplied. So grace multiplies through knowledge. 
So the more you know, the more result you command, the more grace that you have. The more you know, the more grace you enjoy. And the more grace you enjoy, the greater the results that you command. That is why understanding the secret, the laws of success is not an option, but a must if success is our desire. I'll be looking at one of the laws this morning, which is the law of vision. The law of vision. The law of vision. What is vision? Vision is the unfolding of God's plan and purpose as it relates to you and to me as individuals. Vision is the unfolding of God's plan and purpose as it relates to you and to me as individuals. Unfolding of God's plan, unfolding of God's purpose to you and to me. It is knowing God's plan and purpose for your life and for my life. It talks about knowing where you are going in life. Because if you don't know where you are going, everywhere will look like it and you will never arrive there. If you are not sure of where you are going, everywhere will look like it and you will never arrive there. I saw a very pathetic story of a man in the Bible who left all of the challenges to go to the land of Canaan. And then he got to Haran and dwelt in Haran and died in Haran. Genesis chapter 11 verse 31 and verse 32. Genesis 11, 31 and 32. The father of Abraham, Terah, he took his son Abraham and Lot, the son of Haran, his son's son, and Sarai, his daughter-in-law, his son Abraham's wife. And they went forth with them from all the churches to go into the land of Canaan. And they came unto Haran and dwelt there. Where was he going? I can't hear you. Where was he going? The land of Canaan. He was going to the land of Canaan. But he got to Haran and dwelt in Haran. And then verse 32. His years were, his days were 205 years and Terah died in Haran. Where was he going? Where did he dwell? Where did he die? Did he get to where he was going? Maybe Haran looked like where he was going. So he dwelt there and died there. If you are not sure of where you are going in life, everywhere will look like it. And you never arrive there. That is why in the journey of life, speed is not as important as direction. Oh, I want it quick. I want it fast. When the generation where people want things done fast, fast, want things done sharp, sharp, but it does not always follow that way. Speed is not as important as direction. Just get on key. Just get online. And then no matter how slow it may look, it's, it's always steady. And you are sure of arriving at your destination. Speed is not as important because no matter how fast you travel, no matter how fast you drive on the wrong direction, on the wrong road, you will never arrive at your destination. 
That is why I pray for everyone that is on my voice today. The plan and purpose of God for your life shall be made known to you. Amen. Let me hear your loud amen if you are the one. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. But how do I assess God's plan for my life? Number one, we must recognize the place of vision in our lives. Without vision, life becomes a weight. Without vision, life becomes a body. Without vision, life becomes unfair. Without vision, life becomes unequal. Where an individual will never be equal with his equals. Less than his equal. Without vision, life becomes an adventure in frustration and futility. Proverbs chapter 29 and verse 18. Proverbs chapter 29 and verse 18. Where there is no vision. What happened? The people perish. Where there is no vision. The people perish. That is to show how important vision is to you and to me. If you must lead a fulfilled life. And until you recognize the importance of vision. You will never give it all it takes to acquire it. So understand that your life is meaningless without vision. Understand that without vision, you cannot ar arrive at your de destination. Understand that without vision, life becomes frustrating. So when you know and understand the importance of vision for your life, then you give it all that it takes. You need to pray, you pray, you need to fast, you fast. You need to wait on God, you wait on God. You need to go on retreat, you go on retreat. Because you know that your life depends on it. Number two, seek for it with all sincerity of heart. Seek for vision with all sincerity of heart. Proverbs chapter 18 verse 1. True desire, a man having separated himself, in secret and intermediate with all wisdom. True a desire, a man having separated himself because he desires something, so he separates himself to look for it. He separates himself to seek it. You must seek vision with everything inside of you. With sincerity of your heart. Be tired of where you are. Be tired of struggling. Be tired of patching life. Be tired of experimenting with your life. Life is too short. Life is too precious to be experimented with. You see, the worst use of time and life is to labor very hard to get to the top only to discover that the ladder is leaning on the wrong wall. How many people are regretting today? Oh, had I know, had I know, had I know, had I know. Because by the time you get to the top and you discover that the ladder is leaning on the wrong wall, it will be too late. For you to start all over again. Too late. That is why seeking for wisdom, I mean vision, seeking vision is not an option. It's a must. It's a thing you must do after salvation, the next thing. Oh Lord, what would you have me do? Oh Lord, what is your plan for my life? Oh Lord, what is your purpose for my life? Apostle Paul would have died unnoticed. Died without being known beyond his locality. Until he had an encounter with Jesus. 
In Acts of Apostles chapter 9, and in verse 6, he asked this one question. Lord, what would you have me to do? And the two Ananias, the plan and purpose of God for his life was unveiled. He led a more glorious life after he had encountered with Jesus than when he was practicing law. How many of you are celebrating your certificate today? That has nothing to do with God's plan and purpose for your life. And that is the reason why you struggle. That is the reason why things are not working. How many of you are not the sound of my voice today are in the place where you ought not to be? Work in an organization where you ought not to work. Working in an industry where you ought not to work. So things are working for others, but these are not working for you. Because you do not belong there. And until you know where you belong, your journey will be long. You belong. That is why it is never too late to settle with God and ask him. And if you are trailing the wrong direction, grace to retrace your steps, receive it right now. Amen. You don't start business because you have money. You ask God, Lord, what would you? Lord, what are you saying? Lord, are you there? So you won't put your money and then you lost the whole money. Including in choosing your career and profession, ask God. So you must seek wisdom, I mean vision, with all sincerity of heart. Number three, engage the help of the Holy Spirit. First Corinthians chapter 2 verse 9 to 12. First Corinthians 2, 9 to 12, engage the help of the Holy Spirit. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. Neither has it entered into the heart of man. The things which God had prepared for those that love him. For them that love him. And in verse 10, the Bible says that this can only be unveiled, revealed to us by his spirit. For the spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. So you engage, verse 11, the help of the Holy Ghost that is indwelled in you to search out what the plan and the purpose of God is for your life. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so, the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. Verse 11, verse 12. But the spirit of God, now we have received, not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God. That we might know the things that are freely given unto us. Vision is a free gift from God. But you must discover it. You must discover it. You must discover it. The purpose of God for your life is not for your decision. It's for your discovery. So you engage the help of the Holy Ghost. To guide you. To lead you, all right, into God's plan and purpose for your life. What more? Number four, engage the altar of prayer. Engage the altar of prayer. Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 3. Call unto me, and I will answer. And I will show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Which thou knowest not. Which thou I will show you. Call unto me and I will answer. I'd like you to understand this scripture very importantly. He said, call unto me and I will answer. Not I will give you, but I will show you. There's a difference between I will give you and I will show you. Most prayer that we pray as believers is a prayer of Lord. Give me, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. That's the kindergarten order of prayer. Only children ask for their parents or whosoever to give me. Daddy, give me this. Give me that. That is children's department of prayer. Mature people pray, God, show me. They call unto me and I will show 
Because what God shows you is superior to what he gives you. What he gives you is exhaustible, but what he shows you is inexhaustible. You keep eating from it and eating from it. That's why the Bible says in Deuteronomy chapter 30 and verse 30. Deuteronomy, secret things belong unto God, but the ones that are unveiled, 29, 29, I think, the ones that are unveiled, they are for you and for me. For you and for me. For you and for me. Secret things belong unto God. The secret things belong unto the Lord, our God. But those things which are revealed unto you and unto me, they belong to us and belong to our children. Meaning that the things God revealed to you, unveiled to you, shows to you, belongs to you, not just for you and for your children. So you can exhaust it. That is why we must continually pray prayer of inquiry. And that was one of the secrets of David. Always asking God the way out, the way forward, before he takes any step. Praise the Lord. So, we must engage the altar of prayer. But to seek God's plan and purpose for our life fulfilled, please note the following. To seek God's plan for our lives come true, number one, we must believe in it. After he has shown it to you, believe. And one of the proofs that you believe in it is to pursue it. Pursue it tirelessly. Pursue it, your circumstance and situation notwithstanding. Pursue it even when everything around you look against it. As if everything around you is working against his plan and purpose for life. Pursue it. When God gave his servant, the apostle of this commission, the prosperity message, he pursued it with everything inside of him. Even when he did not look like it. I can't be poor, but everything around me was speaking poverty, including his vehicle. I cannot be poor. Criticism everywhere. I cannot be poor. And you can see today. So you must believe in it by taking steps towards it. You must believe in it by pursuing after it. Your situation, present situation, and circumstances notwithstanding. Number two, we must engage spiritual warfare. First Corinthians chapter 16 and verse 9. Engage spiritual warfare. First Corinthians 69. Great and effectual door is open unto me, but there are many adversaries. So on the prayer altar, you ward off all adversaries. On the prayer altar, you confront the adversaries. On the prayer altar, you clear off all adversaries that may want to hinder the plan and purpose of God for your life. When things are not working, don't watch. Confront it. Pray. 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 When you get to a crossroad, not knowing what to do, steps to take next, pray. Prayer is one of the vital keys delivered to us as believers. For fulfillment of our prophecies. I mean, of God's plan and purpose for our lives. Great door, effectual door. But there are many adversaries. In the name of Jesus Christ, every adversary standing between you and God's plan and purpose for your life, today is destroyed in the name of Jesus. Amen. Come on, let me hear your louder amen. amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. No adversary standing between you and your glorious destiny will remain standing after this service today. In the precious name of Jesus Christ. Give the Lord a big clap offering. It's worthy. Hallelujah. Welcome to Covenant Family Day. Jeremiah chapter 31 verse 1. We understand from this scripture that God is the God of all families. I 
at the same time, said the Lord, I will be the God of all families in Israel and they shall be my people. I will be the God of all families. So God is a God of all families and we must recognize that by redemption, we are now members. We now belong to the lineage of the household of God. By redemption. If any man be in Christ, is a new creation. All things are passed away, and behold, all things are becoming new. Second Corinthians chapter five and verse seventeen, Ephesians chapter two and verse nineteen, Ephesians chapter two, verse nineteen. Bible speaking says, "Now therefore, ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but are fellow citizens with the saints." And of the household. We are no longer foreigners. So by redemption we now belong to a new lineage. We belong to the household of God. And as a result, every generational cause, every spiral, every enchantment associated with our biological lineage has no power, has no hold over us anymore. You must have. Amen. Say loud amen if I say so. So we must have this understanding that whatever evil that is running in your biological family has no power, has no grip over your life because you now belong to a new family, the family of God, a, a family that can never be oppressed, a family that can never be afflicted by the devil, a family that can never be stopped by any devil anywhere. That's where you belong. That's where I belong. That's where we belong. We belong to the household of God. Therefore, today I pray, every evil associated with your biological family, I free you from it right now. You are free from it right now. You are free from it right now. You are free from it right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are free from generational causes, free from spells, in the name of Jesus, free from enchantment, in the name of Jesus Christ. Numbers 20, 23. Surely no enchantment, no divination on the gates of Jacob. That's where you belong. And in Galatians chapter 3, verse 13 and verse 14, Christ has redeemed us. That is where you belong. So pull yourself out of any evil that is in your family. You are not a cost carrier. You are not a, an evil carrier. But an evil breaker, a cost breaker. That's who you are in the Lord. But what must I do to secure rescue for my family? Number one, plead for mercy. Now that you belong to the family of God, what about the other members in your family? Plead for God's mercy. Stand in the gap on the behalf of your family to break any evil, to destroy any evil that is found therein. That is why you are there. Plead for mercy. Stand in the gap. Plead for mercy. And stand in the gap in prayer, in fasting for your family. Lord, this evil must end. This evil must cease. This evil must not continue. I remember many years ago when I was believing God for a job, I was out of my first job. And I did it was delayed. And I remember I discovered that my elder brother graduated for many years, also on the line for miracle job. The one for, that followed him graduated many years, also on the line for miracle job. And me joining them, I said, No, this is an evil. I must not join them. It must not happen. So I stood in the gap. And I remember in those days, we still used to have a pastoral care bus. So I put it there. Lord, this evil must end. Must end with me and must end in the life of others. I was not being selfish about it. Praying for myself only. No. And within the space of three months, the three of us got jobs. Praise the Lord. 
If you are clapping for Jesus, make it bigger and louder. Within the space of three months, and one of us got a job, his appointment, his employment was backdated three years. And all the salary, all the arrears for the year, so backdated paid at once. I thought you were clapping for Jesus. <laughs> and me, in one week, I changed job three times. In one week. Therefore, every evil associated with your family that is keeping you down, today is the sword in the name of Jesus. Today is the sword in the name of Jesus. Every evil in your lineage today is the sword in the name of Jesus. That's how to do it. Don't watch the devil molest your family. Immediate family, extended family. That's why you are there. That's why you are there. Esther stood in for the Jews and God intervened. Therefore, every family under the sound of my voice today is free from satanic siege. Yeah. Let me hear your louder amen. Yeah. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Your family is free yeah. from satanic siege. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. Rise on your feet. I like to lift up your voice to God in prayer. What is that evil in your family that you don't want anymore? You have one minute to do that. Lord, in this family covenant day, today, destroy this evil. In this covenant family day, today, destroy this evil in my family. Untimely death, destroy. Strange sickness, destroy. Unemployment, destroy. Monetary crisis, destroy. Today, today, today. Lift up your voices. And pray this prayer from your heart. Lord, every evil ravaging my family today, I stand in the gap and I pray and I decree in the name of Jesus that such evil be destroyed. In the name of Jesus 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 be destroyed. Name of Jesus be destroyed. Unemployment be destroyed. Poverty in my family be destroyed. In the name of Jesus Christ. Raise your voice, stand in the gap, and pray. You have 30 more seconds to rescue your family from every satanic siege in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, from satanic affliction, from satanic oppression in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Pray for your sibling, pray for every member of your family, pray for your children, pray for your parents in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Lord, put an end to this ordeal. Lord, put an end to this evil in my family. Today, 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 rescue my family. Rescue my family from this evil. Jesus, rescue my family. Lero tale briadosh. Thank you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ. One major evil among others ravaging family is financial lack. Families, all of them graduate, but you can't go on to anyone to ask for 50,000. Living an average life is an evil. Walking like an elephant, eating like a rat is an evil. A family where you have only one person as a rich man there is a family of poor people. You know a man highly placed for sharing his experience with me? He said in his family that it's like the only tree that other people run to take over. He was exclaiming because they were milking him and he had no option. That is why in your family this year, God will raise financial giants. Let me hear your loud amen if you are the one. In your family this year, God will raise financial giants. And that is starting from you. That is starting from you. Say with me, Holy Ghost fire. Consume every altar and mortal afflicting my family with poverty right now. Right now, in the name of Jesus Christ, lift up your voices and pray that prayer. Rescue your family 
from financial misfortune. Father, in the name of Jesus, and by the fire of the Holy Ghost, consume every altar, every mortar, every altar raised by my ancestors, every altar raised by my forefathers, every covenant with any devil in my family that is afflicting us with poverty be consumed with fire be consumed with fire be consumed with fire are you praying lift up your voices destroy that altar lift up your voices dismantle that altar in the name of Jesus Christ every altar every mortar every covenant every curse afflicting my family with poverty be destroyed be destroyed right now 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 in the name of jesus lift up your voices one minute to pray this way brato shetale reketolia baradosh ekrados in the name of jesus in the name of jesus i rescue my family from poverty in the name of Jesus, every altar, every mortar, every covenant afflicting my family with poverty be consumed by the fire of the Holy Ghost. By the fire of the Holy Ghost. By the fire of the Holy Ghost. Right now, in the name of Joshua, I lose myself, I break myself, I lose myself, I break myself loose from it. From poverty, I walk out of it, and every member of my family, my siblings, in the name of Jesus, my parents, my children, in the name of Jesus Christ, raise your voice, cry to God. Nero Talabrado Shata. Jesus, I give it thanks. In Jesus' precious name. Let me hear you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Say to me, Father. By this covenant family day, raise financial emperors sitting on financial empires from my family this year, beginning from me. Are you set to pray that prayer? Lord, raise financial emperors in my family this year, beginning from me. Lift up your voices one minute to pray this prayer. Financial emperors. By this covenant family day. Lord raise financial emperors. Sitting on financial empires. From my family. This year. Beginning from me. Beginning from me. Beginning from me. Beginning from me. Beginning from me, Jesus raised financial emperors sitting on financial empires from my family, in my family. This year, beginning from me, in the mighty name of Jesus, I am imagining this year a financial giant. I am imagining this year a financial emperor. I am imagining this year a financial success in the name of Jesus Christ. Raise financial empire started from me. Started Lord from me. Started Lord from me. Financial emperors started Lord from me. Financial giant started Lord from me. Thank you, Jesus. Take all the glory forever in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Give me a louder amen. amen. And the loudest amen that you can. Place your right hand on your head. I decree in the name of Jesus Christ every cause of poverty hanging over any family under the sound of my voice be broken right now in the name of Jesus. Every altar and mortar in the name of Jesus afflicting any family under the sound of my voice with poverty is destroyed right now. Is destroyed right now. Every covenant that has been entered into by our ancestors that is affecting our families today, that covenant is destroyed. That covenant is destroyed. Is destroyed in the name of Jesus. Every family that is being ravaged with untimely death today, I decree your liberty. 
that untimely death cease now. 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 Every limitation placed on any family that has hindered people from going above a certain level, that limit is destroyed. That limit is taken off. Where no one has ever got into your family, you'll be the first to get there. You will be the first to get there. What no one has ever achieved in your family, you'll be the first to achieve it. So shall it be. It is done. All heads bowed and all eyes closed. You are here, you have not surrendered your life to Christ at any time. I want to pray for you. Success is not in view without salvation. You cannot be led by God until you are born again. So I'd like you to say this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, I surrender my life to you today. As my Lord and my Savior, forgive me all my sins. Wash me with your precious blood. I believe you died for me and on the third day you rose again that I might be justified right now. I believe my sins are forgiven. I'm justified by your blood. I am saved. I am born again. I'm free from the power of sin to serve the living God. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Amen. I want to pray for you. All heads bowed and all eyes closed. You say that prayer with me. Lift up your hands. Let me pray for you. I want to pray for you. You say the prayer with me. I want to pray for you. God bless you. God bless you. I want to pray for you. You say that prayer with me. Lift up your hands. I want to pray for you. Please carry your Bible, whatever I came to church with, as a choir sing. Quickly join me in front here. Give me the privilege to pray for you. It's a new dawn for you. Your life is taking a new turn. Walk out on the devil and be blessed of the Lord. Choir.